Hi, I'm your Xi'an's friend, Uzi and welcome to Xi'an Space School, where we explore the wonders of science and space. In this video, we're going to learn all about Mars, the red planet. How do you get there? How do you land? How do you look for life? And much more. If you're curious about Mars, this video is for you. So let's get started. Is Mars red hot? Mars may look hot, but don't let its color fool you. Mars is actually pretty cold. In orbit, Mars is about 50 million miles farther away from the Sun than Earth. That means it gets a lot less light and heat to keep it warm. Mars also has a hard time holding on to the heat it does get. On Earth, much of the Sun's heat gets trapped in our atmosphere, which acts like a blanket to keep our planet warm. But Mars's atmosphere is about 100 times thinner than Earth's, so heat from the Sun can easily escape. How easily? If you were standing on the Martian equator at noon, it would feel like summer at your feet, but winter near your head. At night, it's even worse. When the sun goes down, temperatures can plummet to negative triple digits. And beware of cold winter nights when it could drop even lower. So if you plan to visit, better bring a spacesuit to keep warm. Mars really is a pretty cool planet. How do you get to Mars? If you want to send a spacecraft all the way to Mars, first you'll need a fast rocket to escape the pull of Earth's gravity. The heavier your spacecraft, the more powerful your rocket needs to be to lift off. Next, make sure you launch at the right time. Mars and Earth orbit the Sun at different speeds and distances. Sometimes they're really far apart, and other times they come closer together. About every two years, the two planets are in perfect positions to get to Mars with the least amount of rocket fuel. That's important. The total trip is over 300 million miles. Finally, make sure your aim is right. You can't shoot for where Mars is at launch time. You have to aim for where it will be when you get there. It's a lot like how a quarterback passes a football. Also, you may need a few thrusts to correct your direction along the way so you don't miss Mars. If all goes well, you'll get to the red planet in about seven or eight months. Then, if you actually want to land on Mars, well, that's a whole other challenge. How do you land on Mars? Very carefully. Your spacecraft hurtles toward the planet at thousands of miles per hour so you'll have to hit the brakes in a hurry. First, your capsule needs a heat shield. It protects the spacecraft inside from the heat and friction of entry into the atmosphere. Friction slows you down over 90%, but not enough to land safely. Use a parachute to slow down even more. Still falling at over 100 miles per hour, you need the right system to land safely. Here are some options. With a small to mid-sized rover, use a cushion of airbags along with retro rockets. Impact at 30 miles an hour and bounce to a stop. The large lander use retro rockets and landing legs to touch down going about six miles an hour. Or with a large heavy rover, use a big jet pack to slow down to under two miles an hour. Then gently lower it on cables to land on its wheels. Any way you do it, you'll need skill and hard work. There's nothing easy about landing on Mars. What happens when the sun blocks our signal? About every two years, Earth and Mars wind up on opposite sides of the Sun. That's called solar conjunction. It's like being on either side of a huge bonfire. We can't see Mars, and our landers, rovers, and orbiters can't see us. If our spacecraft send back signals, charged particles from the Sun could interfere, causing gaps in the data that reach us. That's not a big deal. If something's missing, it can always be reset later. But no way do we want to lose data when we send up commands. Receiving a partial command could confuse the spacecraft, putting them in grave danger. So mission controllers plan ahead by sending up simple to-do lists, including regular health checkups. Back home, this break in communications lets team members catch up on other work or take a well-deserved vacation. Solar conjunction lasts just a few weeks, then it's back to the grindstone on Earth and on Mars. How do rovers drive on Mars? First of all, there's no joystick for driving a Mars rover. Before a rover hits the road, engineers send computer commands overnight, telling it where to go the next day. Depending on how tricky the terrain is, rover drivers have two options. They can send a string of specific commands like, drive forward five meters, then turn right 90 degrees. The rover turns its wheels enough times to add up to five meters, and then turns in place. Or if it looks safe, they can let the rover think on its own. They write commands like, see that rock over there? Find your way there safely. Then, using two cameras like human eyes, the rover gets a 3D view of hazards such as large rocks and steep slopes. After mapping the danger zones, it plots the safest route to avoid them. Either way, did the rover complete its drive as planned? Engineers double-check when the rover sends back a postcard of its new spot on Mars. Why is Curiosity looking for organics? 
Organics are carbon-based molecules, key ingredients to life. If Curiosity finds organics in ancient rocks, there's a better chance Mars once had good conditions for small life forms called microbes. But finding organics is hard. That's because organics easily break down when exposed to harsh things like extreme radiation and chemical oxidants that gave the Martian surface its rusty color. A great place to look for ancient organics today is in rock layers. Organics that were quickly trapped and buried in layers of mud or in sediments that sank to the bottom of a body of water could have an especially good chance of being preserved. Scientists think Curiosity's landing site, Gale Crater, contains those special layers, created in ancient times when water was present. The water dried up long ago, but rock layers that remain today could still preserve organics inside. If Curiosity finds organics, it wouldn't prove life existed, but it sure would improve the odds that Mars once had the right ingredients for life. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about Mars, the red planet. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Xi'an Space School and hit the bell icon to never miss a video. You can also check out my other videos, or follow me on social media for more awesome content. The links are in the description below. This is Uzi signing off. Remember, stay curious and keep exploring.